Have you ever done a painting where you have just a really rough idea in your mind, but you have absolutely no idea how it's going to play out? Um, well, that is what's happening with me right now. So I have just got a total rainbow of colours. It's going to be a Dutch pour, um, a, just a total rainbow of colours. Um, I just in, I have in my mind some sort of explosion of colour. So starting from a focal point and then just bursting out. Um, I really don't know how I'm going to do it yet. So I'm really excited um, because it's so nice just to just to go with the paint. Um, somebody left me a comment recently um, that it's good it, uh, that I let the paint tell the story. And I think that's what you have to do sometimes with fluid art. Um, it's really good that you don't have a clear set idea what you, of what you want to create. You just let the paint do its thing. You let the paint tell the story. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. And I'm really excited. So um, let's get started. So I'll just show you quickly what colours I'm using. Um, you'll see, if you forget those three at the moment, I've basically got pinks and purples, just a massive selection of pinks and purples, gold and orange. This pinky is a pinky red, so I'm touching on the red there. But, but it's basically pinks, purples, orangey, rich colours, which I love. But then I also love adding in such a contrast. So I'm going to add in some turquoises and some green somehow. Um, not sure how I'm going to do it yet. So they're all Dutch pour paints, Dutch pour recipe, which means I've mixed them all with flood flower troll and water. So I'll put the recipe in the description of this video. This canvas is 42 by 60 centimetres. Um, I envisage starting at the explosion of colour, starting not from the centre, but starting off centre. So I am going to have a focal point, I think, of about here. And then the colours, I'm going to just blow away from that focal point. So it's going to create just a, a burst of colour. I see them, I see myself having some darker colours at the edges. So I think I'm just literally going to just drizzle this paint on in some sort of order. Hopefully I'll make sense of it as I go and just see what happens. So I want some dark purple, I think, around the top here. I might blow this out actually with the hairdryer first, so I'm creating a bit of a base. Now, I haven't mixed any paints, especially for this, so I'm just really going with what I've got. So that's all, all used up. I could mix, obviously I could mix more, but I didn't really want to. Um, a little bit of pink here, I think, and then maybe more round here. Maybe... Right, I think I've got enough paint on there now. There's a lot of bald canvas, but that doesn't really matter because that will get um, covered as I blow the paint out. Now, the focal point seems to have shifted up here a little bit. I really want it down here. So I think it just makes sense that I just, and now that will be determined by where I start blowing with the hairdryer. So I think I'm just gonna start about here. I'm just gonna see what happens.
Wow. Wow, that is so cool. The only thing I wish is that I actually had done it symmetrically. Wow, look at the colours. So the only what I'm actually not happy with is this dark purple. Because I wish, actually, in hindsight, I had done maybe some rings around so that you had the similar colours everywhere. I wonder if I could just do anything about that. Right, I might regret this, but I don't like this dark blue. So it's coming off. So I think this is what I had in my mind, just an explosion of colour. It is definitely that. Um, I poured, poured and poured again that section and now I'm happy with it. Um, I wish I had just had a symmetrical layering of the colours to start with. I say symmetrical from this point, from this off centre point. Um, instead, I was trying something where I was having one colour one side, one colour the other side. And to me, it just didn't balance at the end. So... I kept going. So let me take you in close up because it's just beautiful. It is just amazing. The cells are quite large. So the only worry I have with that is that if they just keep expanding, they will lose their shape. So sometimes if you get quite large cells quite early on after you've blown a painting out, they do keep expanding. So my concern is that some of this definition will be lost as it keeps um, expanding, as it keeps um, drying. But to be optimistic, it could just stay like this, in which case, oh my goodness, it is so pretty. Um, it oh, It's just beautiful. It's just so sort of organic and natural. It is just like an explosion of colour. Um, the section in this corner... The cells at the moment are slightly smaller. I don't know if you can see that. There's less cells at the moment. And that is literally just because of time, because that was the that was the bit that has only just been blown out, whereas the other bits now are maybe 10 minutes on. Um, so that will, I think, develop more cells over time. Um, look at that detail. So this is because you get all these details and cells because I've mixed such a variety of paints. So some iridescence, non-iridescence, some transparent, some non-transparent. And it's the mixing of all the paint that creates these beautiful, beautiful effects. So fingers crossed this dries OK. It's worked. It's really, really worked. It's a bit different from how I imagined it to be. But the concept is there and I love it. What a crazy combination clash of colours. Um, it, but it, it's, it's just work. It's definitely an explosion. That's the focal point here. And then it just it just fires out from, from all, in, all, in all angles. I am so happy with it. It's just, it just it's just happy. Happy, bright and colourful. Um, let me show you up close. 
um, the colours have just worked beautifully together. So where you've got the iridescent colours, you've got um, lots of little details, lots of little cells. Um, orange cells there because orange is iridescent. Green cells there, green is iridescent. So it's definitely some of the iridescents that are popping up through. Pink, that's not iridescent, but you've got some beautiful pink cells there. Um, it's just such an interesting painting. I would do it differently if I did this again. Um, I would definitely lay the colours down in a much more symmetrical way, having the same colours top and bottom. Unless I was doing, trying to make it look like something in particular. Um, but despite having to re-pour um, and re-blow the paint out, I think it works because... You are, I know where I've done it again, but I think if you hadn't have seen this painting, you might not know which bit went wrong and um, which bit I had to repeat. Um, now, let me show you in the light because it's incredible. Look how iridescent that is. So the gold, the green, the turquoise, the whole thing. It's just electric. So bright and shiny and shimmery. So I can't wait to, that. once this is cured, I can't wait to varnish this because I think it's just going to bring it to life. The colours will just pop. It will just look so bright. So thank you so much for watching. Please do let me know what you think of this. Um, it's very bright, very bold. Let me know um, what your thoughts are. If you like it, um, if you don't like it, what you think of this um, bold, slightly crazy technique. Great. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.